Okay, so for this screencast, I'm going to go over a video chat app that I built. Uh, it took me five days to build it. And the reason why I built it was because I heard about the Twilio um, apprenticeship program about five days ago. Got really excited about it. So I looked into uh, some other APIs and I thought this one looked really fun to make this, uh, especially since the shelter in place, people are always trying to talk to each other. Um, but anyways, um, this is what I built. I called it uh, Call Me Maybe. Um, I used React as to develop my front end. And then for the back end, I used uh, Express and Node.js. Um, so starting with the front end, the first thing that the user does is that they create a room. And so I have a create room method here. And I use Axios, the Axios library, to send a post request to my quote unquote back end, my server.js file, where I'm keeping having my Express um, and Node.js um, methods back there. So I sent a post request to slash room and I exposed a uh, endpoint on slashed room uh, in my backend. And then with that, I would send a room name uh, that I would save in this dot state dot new room name. And I would get that from a user input um, and I'd have that input double binded. So and in the backend, I would then get that room name from the request dot body dot room name and I would use the client dot video dot rooms dot create method um, from the Twilio backend API and set the unique uh, name as the room name that the user generated. And then I attached a dot then a, a promise using the dot then method, sending the full room back uh, in the send method, the response dot send method. So I send the whole room back. And then once I got the back, I set the state of my React component, which was the video component, uh, using I used the uh, using the set state a method. Um, and so here, I set the room in, room parameter to be uh, the response that I got, which was the room itself. And I set the room name, and I got the uh, unique name from the response data room unique name. Um, after that, I just uh, alerted the user that the room was successfully created, or I caught an error. After the user creates a room, uh, the user then, then connects to the room. Um, and actually, in order to connect to the room, you actually first have to have a token, right? And so when the user clicks join room, first a get token method runs. I, I again use Axios and use a get method. And this is the second endpoint that I made, which was the slash token endpoint. I pass into the params, which actually uh, is in the query string, the room, um, the uh, the room being this dot state dot new room name and my back end I got that out of uh, the HTTP uh, request uh, by using the request dot query dot room and then I generate the token by this little helper method I made called create access token and I save that in a util dot js file and here I required a faker library and I required the access token from uh, the Twilio a library. I have my account SID, my API key, my API secret all uh, here in the back end. Um, and here's my create access token function. I create a video grant. I create an access token instance using the new access token. Sorry, uh, I create a new access token instance. Um, and then with the identity, uh, what I set as the identity is I use the faker library to create a fake name. And I set the identity on the access token to that, that fake uh, fake generated identity. Um, I was actually having problems with this because uh, you need to have two different identities in order for uh, you to ha have two different people connect to the same room. Um, and I actually was doing this originally and it still was having problems with that. And in order to find out I was having that problem, I had to uh, just send out uh, in the connect method, which I'll show you guys in a little bit in my join room method had to put in a log that printed out all the errors and it said that I had duplicate identities. Um, so then I made a new grant and I attached that grant to the access token and I returned uh, the access token from that. And then from that access token, I used the response to send that access token back to my front end. And then once I got that, uh, if it all went well, I joined a room. If it, don't, if it didn't, I would catch that error and then alert the user. Um, and then in my join room method, which is down here, 
I would use the uh, Twilio uh, front end SDK uh, to uh, connect method to connect the user to the room, right? So I use the access token that I had saved in the state. Uh, I used uh, the name that was saved in the state. And then from then I generated, I uh, connected to the room, right? So once the room was joined, I'd notify the user that the room was joined. I would set the state to the actual room instance. I would notify the local user when the participants entered a room. So I did this. So when, let's say I joined, and then this is only for two people, even though I did uh, make it to where you, you can uh, have groups, but it's just easier for me to make it for two people because I'm not de developing too much of the user uh, interface. Uh, but I would notify when someone else entered the room. Um, then also I would add local media to the state, right? And then if that didn't, if, if not, if we didn't connect, I'd also then console, uh, log error to the console. I'll also alert the user that something went wrong with their, um, uh, connection. So this is a, actually a really fun project. I messed around with being able to connect and disconnect the, uh, the, a local media uh, from the UI. Um, that was pretty cool. Uh, really, is really fun uh, interacting with the Twilio API. It made it really uh, easy to make such a really fun and uh, unique application.